So the first thing you want to remember when you're drawing cylindrical forms um, that have ellipses in them uh, is just the rule of ellipses in perspective. So a lot of times people will see the top ellipse of a glass and it will have this much width. And then the glass, the body of the glass will come down like this. But then their eyes and their brain is telling them that because it's sitting on a table, that it kind of looks flat like this, okay? So again, also when you're drawing ellipses, always draw a center axis line through the cup so you can make sure that the symmetry of the form is correct. Um, but uh, again, the reason why, so this top part, if we look at the top part of the glass like that, that looks relatively correct because it looks like it's got depth um, and volume on the top part. But then if we move down and we look at the bottom, it looks totally flat. So the rule of ellipses is, is as they move down through the form, in perspective, this is to make your drawings look like they actually have volume and form to them. As they move down through the form, they're always going to get rounder. Even if your brain and your eye tells you that the bottom doesn't look like it's round, you have to make them rounder because if you don't and you kind of follow the perception of what your brain is telling you, it looks like to your eyes, um, the form will just not, it, does, it won't look like it has any kind of dimension to it. So just make sure you follow this rule that as the ellipses, okay, and I'm just going to draw the, this is the minor axis and the major axis. Um, as they move down through the actual cylindrical form, and remember, because you're going to be looking at them in your eye levels up here, so they're going to be moving below your eye level. So as they move down through your eye level, they're going to get wider. And, that, and again, no matter what, like it doesn't matter if, if your brain is telling you that the bottom of something looks like it's flat, um, you just, you have to, you have to make the bottom rounder. So again, if I was taking like a very narrow cylindrical form out of um, like a rectangle and I put a center major access line through the center um, and then I find what I think it looks like the width of the top ellipses in the form. I'm not going to leave the bottom like this. Again, as my ellipses move down through the form, they are going to get wider. Okay, and as long as you follow this rule, then that you can, you'll be able to make sure that your drawings are correct in terms of looking dimensional, okay? Um, and again, if you don't follow the rule and they don't get wider as they move below the top ellipse and you make the bottom flat, it's gonna make the whole thing um, not look dimensional at all. So you wanna set up whatever you're gonna do compositionally. And you, you know, you can, remember you can come in and you can crop areas. You don't have to do the whole thing of everything. And you know, I, I would prefer you have at least three different forms, but you really want to make sure when you are drawing from whatever you set up and if you can put like a desk lamp on it or whatever, that you're really seeing these accentuations of really strong lighter areas coming out that are really sharp um, and white, like what you're seeing in here, because that's where you're going to accentuate all those really lighter areas with your charcoal, your white charcoal pencil, like back in here. Um, and then I, I'm doing this for the purposes of the video and then based on the video um, that I'm making, but also right here. So you, you know, you're going to be working with this ground tone from your paper, and then you're going to be additive with the white. So this is almost kind of like the antithesis of the subtractive drawing. You're going to be additive, and then you're going to kind of be subtractive when you take stuff away with darker or lighter areas, and you can go back and be additive with um, um, with some darker areas with the vine charcoal. So, but the main thing is is like really taking advantage of these really really sharp, high contrast white on, you know, the darker values, darker t darker tones. Um, so make sure when you light it, the more that you have all of that occurring, the more you're going to be able to, to um, convey that it actually looks like glass and then it's sharp and it's, and it's really, 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 really refined. 
So this is gonna be the setup for the demonstration. So I'm just trying to show you, the, the, the last video was with less light in the background, just to show you how much you want the light source to be really accentuating all the highlights and sharpness out of all the glass, or if you're gonna use any kind of um, metal or aluminum or anything like that, that's really kind of absorbing and throwing the, the light back um, from it being illuminated on the on the surface um so i'm just trying to give you a setup so i'm gonna i'm gonna be kind of drawing from these from my kind of perspective which is going to kind of be over here a little bit and then obviously i'm going to be using this first ground um which is going to be like a darker ground like on the value scale probably like around 70 or 80 percent and you you have this this color or this tone in the in the pack of paper that you got um with the Blick uh, art supplies. So I am going to be using for the drawing my very light vine charcoal or willow charcoal, the willow charcoal stick. I'm gonna be using my white pastel stick and I'm gonna be using my white charcoal pencil. And then also towards the end, I'm gonna be using my erasers. Also, if you if you have a chamois or a tissue when you want to start blending instead of using your fingers, um, then you also be able to use that. So I want you to use the whole page and I want you to try to break the edge of the picture plane. So when all those different forms are put together, don't draw them really small and have any negative space around them. But, you know, if they're all don't, just don't centerize them and make them really tiny. If you actually even need to kind of amplify the scale of them a little bit and parts of them get cut off, that's totally fine. And I encourage you to do that. I, it'll just add more pictorial depth to the whole composition if you make them really large and you break the edge of the picture plane. OK, so what I'm going to do is just very lightly with my vine charcoal, I'm going to start mapping out where everything is. Okay, so I know you're not gonna be able to see like where, you're not being able to see me draw from, I just wanted to have more of a close up of what I'm doing, okay? Um, so I'm just mapping out where I think all the objects are. And again, I'm, I'm doing this extremely lightly with my vine charcoal. I'm, I'm barely using any pressure at all. And I'm also, because it's the vine charcoal and not my pastel or a charcoal pencil, I will be able to basically just kind of like wipe it away for the most part. Okay, so this glass is in front of that one. And then I've got this other object over here, like so. I'm just going to kind of draw an axis line like this. And I'm, all I'm doing for, this, for the first part of this is just basically just mapping out these objects and just kind of trying to find the whole composition. Um, and this is the kind of the back edge of what they're sitting on, which I'm gonna take advantage of with the light, okay? And then this comes here. So I crop this, a, a little bit of this glass is being cropped right in the foreground right here, okay? That immediately is gonna draw the viewer into the space. I'm just gonna go like this a little bit. Um, I was looking at my negative space shapes relative to the positive forms. So I checked my proportions of this glass relative to this one, relative to this, relative to this. Okay, and then I broke up the space with the back edge of the ground plane and um, the back, basically the back wall that they're up against. Okay, so once you check all your proportions, you lay out your composition. And again, I amplified everything a little bit. Um, and I broke the edge of the picture plane here, 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 and here. Okay, and just make sure that you try to do that. So just make sure that the objects aren't really small and they're all clustered together and there's all this negative space around the outside. Really check your proportions, check the scale relationships of how the height and the width is relative to everything. And then after that, you can start applying um, the white. So once I've gone back through and I kind of refined some things, made things a little bit bigger, checked the width and the height of everything, laid down some basic shapes for the cast shadows that are being cast, I can go back and I can just very kind of lightly with my finger, just kind of like lighten everything up 
like this, okay? So basically what I have is I have kind of a good structure um, and a foundation for all the shapes um, and the basically I, all the mapping out that I've done of all the forms relative to each other. Um, and then just remember that with the value that's occurring with the, with the um, foundation of the actual paper, that's gonna be like a mid-range value. So you're gonna be able to be additive with your vine charcoal if you wanna make things darker, and then you're gonna be able to um, use your eraser to take something out that you might add. That also includes um, the white. So basically with my pastel, now what I'm doing is I'm coming in and I'm starting to add where I'm seeing it in terms of the really strong highlights. Okay, and I'm doing this with my white pastel. Okay, because when I, because w with the white pastel, I'm going to start being able to add some volume to the glasses, and I'm going to use my charcoal pencil to go back and sharpen up any of the like very, very strong highlights. Okay, so I'm using a combination of my white pastel to take out the lighter parts of the forms. I'm using the value of the actual and tone of the paper itself, okay? And I'm just, I'm, and again, I'm not doing like tons of detail and anything like that. I'm just kind of laying things down for now just so I can get a sense of building the volume and the dimension out through the actual objects, okay? And then, I, and again, you're gonna be able to go back and use your eraser to be subtractive and you're gonna be able to use your charcoal to be additive, okay? I'm just trying, all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, when you're mapping out value structure, you're just trying to get a sense of being able to see everything visually together. Um, and that's going to probably, you're going to have to alter it a little bit, but it gives you, it helps you in building up the foundation of the drawing. And then you can start making relationships and starting to see contrast between different areas. Um, and then you, and then you, like I said, you can go back and you can change things. Um, in terms of what you're seeing with, uh, you know, certain values or whatever. Um, in terms of, in terms of basically in terms of lightness and darkness. Okay. So I'm just kind of just like gently, I'm not using tons of pressure. I'm not I'm just kind of trying to just lay down the white because I want, I, I really want to kind of bring out and illuminate how intense um, the white is on the forms, okay? And I'm doing this in a really, really, right off the bat, a really, really rudimentary way. I'm not thinking, I'm not trying to put any details in yet because I just want to make sure I can map out um, basically where there's white, how it's playing off the actual value of, you know, some of the mid-range neutral values that are happening in the form. Um, and then I can go back and I start being additive with my charcoal and stuff. So you can see I just have a rudimentary kind of basic structure foundation I've laid down with just some white. I have the tone of the paper and then my initial mapping out with the, with the willow charcoal or the vine charcoal. I've not used any black pastel. I've not used any black charcoal pencil. I haven't used my white charcoal pencil. I'm just checking. It's just a matter of going through stages where you're checking everything and checking everything and checking everything. It's just that's really, really important. So again, this shot of what I'm drawing um, is going to be a little bit off because I'm kind of standing above it from where the paper is on the wall for the purposes of the video. But what I want you to see is um, on this back wall here, I'm going to add that white in the next video and then also really take advantage of the cast shadows, which are going to be really understated. Um, and then just really notice that some, there's going to be some parts of some of the objects where it's really dark and you're probably just going to have to be only using fine charcoal for that. However, towards the end, if you do want to introduce your black charcoal pencil, just do it in a couple spots where it's absolutely black. But just remember, there's not going to be parts where that's, that's really happening in the whole composition. So be very cognizant of that, where you don't get too dark with something, or uh, on the flip side of that, you don't make something too light. But what you really want to emphasize with your white charcoal pencil are these really, really strong, sharp, little white highlights that you're seeing all over the drawing. And I would really wait till the end of your drawing to, to, to do that. So I'm gonna introduce the white on the, on the back wall, back here like this. 
Okay, and on this Canson paper that you bought, you're gonna get a slight texture, which is kind of the point of the paper because it's a nice paper. Um, but, and again, you can either blend this with your blending stomp or you can blend it with your finger like I'm doing, or you can blend it with a tissue or you can blend it with a Q-tip. Um, you, you can basically, and also just see how I'm making the edges of the contour with the, with the value, meaning that I'm making it with the value of the white. Okay, so just block everything out again, just like you've been doing in some of your other drawings, especially the egg drawings. Try to block everything out and create edges with value. Don't outline them with pencil. Um, you can go back and sharpen some areas up. That's not a problem at all. Um, but you just don't want to outline everything because when you outline everything, um, as I was talking about with the eggs, is that it just flattens everything out, okay? So again, I'm just laying down the basic value of the white on that back wall. Now, depending on how you have your drawing set up, this might not be occurring in your composition, and that's totally fine. It's not a problem at all. I'm just trying to draw it according to what is set up and how I'm seeing it. So I'm gonna keep moving that over that way and, and uh, adding white over here. And then I'm gonna do a time-lapse video and I'm gonna go back and show how to do some detail. So I just got some tissue paper. And so if you don't have a chamois or you can see like when you, when you start blending the white and I'm barely using any pressure, it'll blend it kind of like very evenly, like what you'd get with fine charcoal. So even if I go back and I add like a stronger white and then I blend it back in, you can see that it'll kind of like almost kind of disappear. Um, so just be very cognizant of that if you're using something extremely soft, but if you use a blending stomp or um, or your hands, it, you'll be able to, like, so if I want to make it even lighter and I blend with my finger back in to what I laid down originally, then I have that foundation that I laid down originally and now I'm able to kind of manipulate um, how light I want it in the background. And then I'm blending it back into the paper. But again, if I go back with my tissue paper and I start you can see it, how much it just brings it right back off. So again, it's all about pressure and manipulation of the materials and just kind of very, take your time, kind of build them up, kind of really get to the understanding like what's happening physically with the materials and the paper and the light and the value range and the contrast. And it just, it takes a lot of time and subtlety of looking at things and going back and forth. Um, but that's kind of the beauty of kind of building and drawing up from its, from its foundation. So when you get a certain point, just remember that you want to go back in and you want to use your kneaded eraser to kind of like blend areas a little bit or take things away when you're trying to be kind of interpretive with this, the, the surface quality of the forms, especially the transparency. Um, and you can also use, obviously, your other erasers for, um, you know, cleaning up really tight edges with your Statler eraser. Um, and then also at the very end, this is where you wanna really, really amplify those really, really, really intense highlights that you're gonna be seeing that are gonna be the whitest parts of your whole drawing. 
Now, just be really cognizant of the fact that they are not, don't outline all your forms. That's just going to flatten everything out. Those really intense highlights are only going to be happening in certain areas on the glass. They're going to be picking up the illumination of the glass in specific areas. They're not going to be all, you're not going to outline the whole form. Again, the minute you do that, it's going to be completely, it's going to start turning completely flat. Just inevitably, there'll be a lot of them occurring in different areas. Um, and then you can just, you know, lay down those really, really intense highlights where, um, where they're actually occurring. Okay, but they're not going to be occurring through the whole form. Um, it doesn't matter how you have your thing set up, but you will see them. Um, and then that's when you want to go back in and add that detail of those really, really, really intense highlights that'll be on top of the lighter parts of the forms that you were, that you, that you built up with the black pastel. Okay. Um, it's just, it's really important that you just don't outline everything just to show that, that there's you know, that there's highlights that um, you're building up when you, when, when you were initially building up everything with your white pastel, that's going to give it the body and the volume. And then th what this does is that it amplifies the contrast. So it's going to make everything look really, 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 really sharp. Um, but just be really cognizant of the placement of where those really extreme highlights are occurring. Okay. Cause what I'm looking at, they're not, they're not everywhere and it's going to fluctuate how they're kind of hitting the contour of certain parts of the forms. 